Hello there, welcome back to the review space, here's another top 10. So, I was born in 1987 and I started playing games as a kid in the 90s. I started with systems like the Game Boy and the Super Nintendo, and I still play some of these classic games that I grew up on from the 16-bit era and maybe even some from the 80s. Some of these titles from the 90s I haven't played since the 90s decade ended. And that was basically my final year of elementary school, 99, early 2000. And a lot of those games I haven't played since I was 12, 11 years old. So here's the top 10 games I haven't played since the 90s. Number 1. Killer Instinct Gold. KI2, Killer Instinct 2. Came out in 96 on the arcade and the N64. I was a huge Killer Instinct fan, and I anticipated the release of uh, Killer Instinct 2, which was basically the sequel to the original Killer Instinct on the Super Nintendo and arcades. I really wanted to play it on the N64, I had the N64, and I really needed Killer Instinct. So the console version was called Killer Instinct Gold, and it featured some downgrades from the original arcade version, particularly in presentation and graphics. It was missing certain presentation things. However, it also added a bunch of new modes like team battles and training mode, and you can even play as the final boss, Gargos. And admittedly though, I think that Killer Instinct 2 was just never as compelling as the first game. It was basically this convoluted story. It was even more confusing than the first one. I think the main problem with KI2 was just it was overshadowed by the other fighting games at the time in the late 90s that was really popular. The PlayStation had games like, you know, Tekken 3. Even something like the Sega Saturn had the Virtual Fighter series. And then later in the late 90s, you would have games like Soul Calibur that ultimately just eclipsed anything that Killer Instinct 2 presentation was able to have and it just wasn't it was a 2D fighting game and it sort of stayed in that 2D gameplay so at the same time it also felt outdated compared to the 3D fighting games that were really hot at the time because the 3D gameplay was taking over and it kind of took over from the 2D era. The last time I played Killer Instinct 2 was around 1998 or so in the arcades. I also played it on the N64 just a little bit and I understand, I mean, it came out recently too, as a downloadable for the Xbox One, uh, along with the Killer Instinct Season 2 bundle or something like that. So, who knows, maybe somewhere down the line, I might play it again. Number 2. Pokemon Blue. Ah, oh, came out in North America back in 98. I had it on the Game Boy. This was the first generation of Pokemon games. It was absolutely red hot in late 98, early 1999. Everybody watched the anime TV show after school. We'd go home after school, watch it at like 4 p.m. right after school on UPN initially, and then it moved to YTV uh, here in Canada. Everybody had a trading card, so everybody had Pokemon cards. They were always trading it and shit like that at school. You know, lunchtime, recess, everybody was like, hey, let's trade Pokemon cards. Eventually, I got Pokemon Blue uh, for a Christmas present. I enjoyed the living hell out of Pokemon Blue. I mean, I played it every single day for the rest of the sixth grade, for the rest of the school year. Every day I'd play it uh, as soon as I woke up in the morning. I brought it to school, played it some more, played it with my friends because they had Game Boys too and they had the game. And then I got back home, played it throughout the night, right before I went to bed, just kept playing it. Eventually, Unwittingly, I caught the missing no glitch from Pokemon Blue. It corrupted my save file, and over time, the game just stopped working on the last day of school. The final day of grade 6, I was looking forward to the fucking summer, July and August 1999, but on the last day, so this was like late June, maybe early July, no Pokemon because I f it stopped working. Fucking stop working. I haven't played Pokemon Blue since 1999. Number 3. Space Invaders. Space Invaders came out originally in 1978 on the fucking arcades. Damn, the late 70s. Well, Space Invaders was one of the most successful and iconic arcade games of all time. And it was basically... It was old hat by the mid-90s. And by, you know, by 94, 95, 96... It was a very archaic game, the graphics were very outdated, the gameplay 
was very predictable, simplistic. It was basically, it had nothing compared to the current games of the time of, you know, Super Nintendo and PlayStation 1. I ended up owning the Super Nintendo version uh, in the mid-90s. Looking back on it, though, it was actually pretty fun. I was glad I got a chance to play it. Uh, it's a classic from the late 70s. As a kid, I'm glad I got a chance to play Space Invaders and at least appreciate that, hey, that's one of those iconic games that made a huge impact in the business. And it was a killer app for its time. Unfortunately, by the time that my Super Nintendo crapped out in maybe around mid-1998, something like that, it stopped working. I haven't played Space Invaders since. Number 4. The Lion King. Came out in 94 in the Super Nintendo. Damn! Now, as a kid, I really enjoyed the Disney movie, The Lion King. And actually watched it a couple of times in theaters. It was just that amazing. Eventually, I got the Super Nintendo video game, and I was really excited to play it. The thing is, the game wasn't very good. As a matter of fact, it sucked. It was far too difficult, especially for a kid's game. The platforming and the jumping elements are just broken. It's way too easy to die during jumps, and because the game has limited lives, you basically died over and over again. You gotta restart the game over and over again. Everything had to be perfect. But the thing is, the jumping was so finicky, you just kept falling. It's ridiculous. The only good thing was the graphics and the, the sound. It was pretty good. It looked like, you know, very, very close to the Disney animated film. It's a game that's definitely best left in the 90s. I wouldn't dream of playing it again. Number 5. Judge Dredd. Came out in 95 on the Super Nintendo again. You know, the movie Judge Dredd starring Sylvester Stallone from 1995 was a piece of shit. And it would take 17 years before we got an actual proper movie adaptation of Dredd, uh, you know, in, in theaters from 2012. Um, the video game version, though, from the mid-90s was actually decent. It was basically a run-and-gun style action game that lets you arrest enemies in pursuit of Rico, the main villain of Mega City 1. It was very challenging, you know, it wasn't the easiest game to beat, but it's an underrated gem for the Super Nintendo. <sighs> I don't know, I haven't played it since the late 90s, so since my Super Nintendo died, and I really haven't played it since. Definitely a solid game though. Number 6, WWF Warzone, came out in 98 on the N64. This was released during the height of Stone Cold's popularity during the Attitude Era. This was when pro wrestling was incredibly fucking hot. Warzone was one of the most rented video games of 1998. Everybody rented it. Uh, if a game was popular at the time, most people would just rent the game from Blockbuster or Rogers Video instead of, you know, paying the whole 60 or 70 dollars for the, the brand new game. Uh, Warzone had the best graphics. It was very realistic uh, in terms of character models. It just looked incredibly realistic for the time anyway. The gameplay wasn't that good because the grappling system was just so complicated. You had to insert a bunch of combinations and buttons and the way that you executed moves was very confusing. Ultimately, the game was basically outshined by a different wrestling game in 1998. We're gonna get to it right now. Number 7. WCW NWO Revenge came out in 1998 on the N64. Uh, this was arguably the greatest wrestling game for the N64. It, Revenge was everything that WWF Warzone didn't have. It featured all the amazing things you could ask for in a fucking wrestling game. A huge roster. It had like a hundred plus characters. You got colorful graphics, you know, it was very colorful and bright, a variety of different arenas, fast-paced gameplay, you got this accessible grappling system. I mean, we played it all the time, you know, I would go to my friend's house and we just played it, we rocked it on the N64 multiplayer uh, all the fucking time. It was one of the best experience in terms of pro wrestling video games compared to any you know WWF game at the time it, it was way better than any WWE type of game oh god I haven't played it since the late 90s I used to borrow it all the time from my friend 
until he moved, or not moved, but he stopped going to ele elementary school. He graduated from elementary and he moved on to high school. So this was around 99. So that was the last time that I, I think I borrowed the game from him. Coming in at number eight is Math Blaster. Episode one, In Search of Spot. Came out in 94 in the PC. Uh, this was one of those educational games that you played as a fucking kid. I mean, it was on the school computer, you know, so you'd have a little computer in the corner of the room, in, in the classroom, and then inside the computer you could play video game. you could play certain games on it. But it was actually kind of fun. Takes me all the way back to the fourth grade. Uh, now that I think about it, elementary school was actually the only place that you'd find these these educational uh, type of games, because I think, I mean, in the outside world, you know, in your everyday ki kid's house, you know, a, a video game console, you don't have these games. You don't have Math Blaster. You don't have Mario is Missing and all these different titles because it's like. It's like a stereotype, you know? An educational game isn't cool. It's not a cool thing to have. It's it's like that's lame, you know? It's it's your your learning. Your it's like school. You don't want to be playing video games and and learning. It's just it's not a cool thing. It's still very nostalgic though. Math Blaster. Oh my god, it fucking goes back. Number 9. Spectre. Fucking Spectre, man. Came out in 91 on the Macintosh. This was an old school computer game. Uh, came out in the early 90s. This was another one of those games we had in typing class. So back in the day, we had a computer room where we practiced typing, you know, 30 words per minute, 25 words per minute, whatever it was. And then we would sometimes browse the internet. It was pretty mundane, you know, there was not much to do, but there are a fu there, there's a couple of games in the computers and one of them was Spectre and usually at the end of the class or near the end of the class there's like 10 minutes and they're like okay you guys could do whatever you want so we would actually get a chance to play games like Spectre and SimCity 2000 Spectre was basically this 3D tank battle game and it was like an obstacle shooter uh, you basically had to collect flags you had to shoot enemies all that stuff it's very old school the graphics are basically polygonal uh, looking models really I mean it's really nothing special I doubt anybody would even remember Spectre except for 90s kids that grew up on those old fucking Macintosh computers but it was actually a decent game it wasn't too bad number 10 Star Wars Shadows of the Empire came out on the N64 in 1996. This was the first ever N64 uh, game I ever played after I got the system. And basically, Shadows of the Empire was this franchise revival. It was basically a project where they focused on the expanded universe. It tried to tie the gap between the episodes 5 and 6, so between Empire and Return of the Jedi. This was the storyline, uh, supposedly what happened in between. They had comic books, novels, toys, and of course, you know, the N64 video game. So, this era was basically the predecessor to the Star Wars prequels that we would get in the late 90s and the early mid 2000s. Uh, the game has some pretty cool moments. I mean, at the beginning it was kind of cool. You got the Hoth battle, you're flying around, killing the, uh, the, the walkers. Overall, though, it's just an okay experience. Uh, for the most part, it's not that special. It's a third-person shooter, and it's kind of slow at times. It's not that exciting uh, once you get to ground level and you're playing as the main character. I think his name was Dash Rendar. The Wampas, the Wampa creatures, were very fucking hard to kill. I mean, they were just tedious to kill. I think they would always kill my character. There was also a bunch of cheat codes you could do and tinker around with. You could play as a Wampa actually with the cheat codes. It seemed like every console and handheld that I had had a Star Wars game. Uh, Shadows of the Empire though wasn't that special. It was actually a little bit more forgettable so that's a game that was stuck in the 90s. I haven't played that one since like 1997 or something. Alright, so that's it. That's my top 10 games that I haven't played since the 90s. That goes back, I was basically 12 or 13. I'm actually, many years went by, more years have gone by 
than when I fucking played those when I was that age. So it's like, that was like 15 or 16 years ago, some of these uh, games that I haven't played. And at the time, I was like 12 years old, the last time I played it. So time really goes by, but man, the 90s was amazing. Those are some of the games that I just haven't played since. I just never bothered to get them again. I never bothered to play them again. And even by emulator, I never really bothered to check them out again. So that's about it. Thanks for watching The Review Space, the most underrated channel on YouTube. For more videos, check out youtube.com backslash The Review Space.